Okay, so here we go. So uh, we're now going to talk about the lumbar plexus. And to, to draw the lumbar plexus and its motor sensory distribution, we're going to use the following mnemonic. Um, and I've written it up here, so it's something that you need to memorize as we go. But the mnemonic is even Eddie favors bow tie line V-links, says it is great lunch for outdoors. So I tribute this to Mark Nielsen. Mark is one of those great educators, and uh, through his years, he's put this together. And uh, we're going to do this to draw the motor sensory distributions for the lumbar plexus. So after you draw that, you can maybe put a little note here that this is for the lumbar plexus of nerves, which is L, basically it's L1 to L4 are the levels. All right, so to do this, we take uh, each of the first letters, and that's what we, um, so we take letters, so we first by saying even, so we draw the letter E. So I'll do that here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Even, Eddie, I'm going to use the color yellow for this one. Even Eddie, we draw the color, the letter E again. Okay, it's got like the letter E and it's got a bit of a tail, okay, but it works. Even Eddie favors, we do the letter F. Even Eddie favors bow tie, and I'm going to use the color white because these are ones that we're not going to focus on as much, but we might as well. Uh, do this bow tie. So we draw up here. We draw a bow tie. That looks like a bow tie. That's a, that's a happy bow tie, isn't it? Bow tie line. We just draw a line. Shing, like that. V links. So we're going to link these two with the letter V. There we go. Even Eddie favors bow tie lined V links. Fantastic. Then the rest, we go, says it is great says it is great lunch for outdoors. There we go. And so what all these stand for are subcostal nerve, ilioinguinal, iliohypogastric, genital femoral nerves, uh, lateral femoral cutaneous, femoral nerve, and obturator nerve. And over here, these represent the levels. And so here is, I don't want that one. I want to do white. So we go like this. Shing. So we go L1, L2, L3, and then L4. And up here is, uh, this is showing the T12 level. Now what these lines represent are the ventral rami. So here's our spinal cord with the dorsal horn gray matter and the ventral horn uh, gray matter like this. So we draw the roots. So there's the dorsal root with the dorsal root ganglion. And there's the dorsal ramus and there's the ventral ramus that comes off. So there's that ventral ramus contributing to this lumbar plexus. Okay, so there's the nerves. So each of these has a motor or sensory or just one or the other. So these lat femoral cutaneous is simply sensory information coming in, but goes to both L2 and L3 spinal nerve levels. Uh, the femoral nerve has both a sensory component that comes in and a motor component that comes out. And then the same thing goes for obturator, has motor and sensory coming in. Okay, so now that we've got this lumbar plexus drawn out, let's over here draw there's the thigh of the right leg and that's where the inguinal region would be. And then we come down and a knee would be somewhere there. And then there's our calf muscle coming down. And here's our heel. And then there's big toe. And then second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. So it's not the prettiest leg you've ever seen, but it works. So there we've got this lower limb, and here we're going to be doing the sensory distribution of uh, the lumbar plexus. So to do that, what we're going to do is right across the kneecap, let's just draw a line. And then we're going to separate into lateral, anterior, and medial thigh in that fashion. And then down here, we're going to draw a line right down the middle of the shin 
and put one side one line to the other and one line to the other like this and then in that first web space halfway through the big toe and halfway through the second toe we're going to put together like that and then a wee bit of skin here on the side of the foot so there we've got our sensory distribution so uh i'm going to grab our paint bucket so when we see the lat fem q it's going to go in this area when we take a look at the femoral nerve, it does the anterior part of the thigh and the medial part of the leg. And then the obturator, it just does a tiny little bit right there. Just a cute little one in that area. Um, so let's draw these out. So here we're going to have the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Here we have the anterior femoral cutaneous nerve. Here we have the obturator cutaneous nerve. And down here in the shin, we have the saphenous nerve or saphenous to put saphenous cutaneous but I'm going to put saphenous nerve like that therefore in this area all sensory neurons and their sensory uh, pathways in the lateral part of the thigh go up to in, in the pathway of the lat fem q and they go to the l2 l3 levels which means the lateral femoral cutaneous distribution overlaps part of the l2 and l3 dermatomes when you look at the anterior femoral cutaneous nerve, so these sensory neurons travel up to the femoral nerve, and then the saphenous nerve sends off uh, its neurons as well to the femoral nerve, which means that the femoral nerve has its field that comprises part of the L2 dermatome and L3 dermatome and L4 dermatome. So between the lat fem Q and the femoral nerve, that comprises a good chunk of the L2, L3 dermatomes. So uh, to just complete this picture, let's uh, take a look there. That is the common fibular cutaneous nerve, sometimes called the lateral sural. If it's a common fibular nerve, it means that it's got two branches. Well, one of those branches is called the superficial uh, fibular nerve, sometimes superficial peroneal nerve. This guy down here in the first web space, that's the deep fibular nerve or deep peroneal nerve and down here that's the sural nerve. So there's our cutaneous distribution in the front of the lower limb. Now what we're going to do is take a cross section through that thigh and over here I'm going to draw a cross section through the thigh and in the middle there's our femur bone with the medullary cavity there in the middle and that thigh is divided into three different compartments. There is a posterior compartment, there is a medial compartment, and there's an anterior compartment. So the anterior compartment is the, your quads, which is innervated by the femoral nerve. So we can then color this in like that. And then the obturator nerve, which does the medial compartment of the thigh, I can do like that. And then I'm going to add a distinct, a, another color in here that we haven't discussed it's part of the sacral plexus but there's our posterior division so let's do this again so here we have the anterior compartment of the thigh here we have the posterior compartment of the thigh and here we have the medial compartment of the thigh there's our three compartments and so this fascia lata is this dense connective tissue that surrounds the thigh and it sends off these septal projections that then form the periostomy around the femur, and it makes these three uh, osteofascial compartments, the anterior thigh, posterior thigh, and medial thigh. So this anterior thigh has the femoral nerve that will come to it. And so there I'm just going to put, so there's femoral nerve, and the primary group of muscles are the quadriceps femoris, and their primary action is knee extension. That's their prime action. When we look at this posterior thigh, so it's in its part of the sciatic, uh, the sacral plexus, which we'll cover next class, but here the posterior thigh, this is all under innervation of the tibial nerve for the most part, and that these uh, are going to, whoops, pardon me. And so there are going to uh, be 
hip flexion tennis it's going to be hip extension and knee flexion that's that prime action okay and then finally here we've got this obturator nerve that comes all the way around and it's then going to do motor innervation so there's obturator nerve and these are the adductors and they adduct the hip okay they're going to adduct the hip um, I forgot to add that this medial part of the thigh that does a cutaneous distribution to the obturator nerve and there we've got the lumbar plexus with its cutaneous and motor distribution with a little bit more from sacral that we'll cover next time.